Hey there guys, thanks for joining me today as we're taking a look at Earth and Beyond. This is a massive multiplayer online role-playing game set in space around the year of 2575. Earth and Beyond is primarily played as you steer your spaceship throughout the galaxy. However, there's also an incredibly cool feature that allows you to get out of your spaceship as you roam around the hundreds of different space stations available. Um, this game was first developed by Westwood Studios. This was in 1997 and it was published by Electronic Arts. So it's already quite an older game. Uh, public beta started in 2002, in March uh, to be precise, and the game went live in January of 2003. And this was done through a progressive storyline that would continue to grow as time progressed. The idea behind this was that there would be monthly patches that would progress the storyline. And this actually happened for about two years until the game was the great disappointment of many, many players taken offline in 2004. Uh, this was actually the end of 2004, around September. So yeah, it's been live for about two years. The cancellation of Earth and Beyond would be known to history as the Earth and Beyond Sunset. But, fortunately enough, the cancellation of Earth and Beyond did not mean its end, because ever since the cancellation, there's been a team working furiously at putting this impressive game back on the star charts. And I am so happy that these guys were here to keep boosting this game into, you know, life as it is today. Um, there was a tool called Net7. Uh, this was released as an emulator for Earth and Beyond, and this tool would restore the game back into its original form. Functionality and content were restored and added back into the game slowly, and today we're taking a look at the game in its current stable and player-ready state. Like previously mentioned, Earth and Beyond is an MMORPG, meaning that everything is played online with others. Uh, whether you're out in space or aboard one of those space stations, everything is multiplayer and running into other players happens very frequently. Uh, EMB is, has a wide variety of things that you can do, much like in other space games, you've got trading, scavenging, combat, exploration. It's all there and depending on the class you'll pick, you'll be worse or better in one of those areas. There's three races, we've got the Terrans, we've got the Progen, and we've got the Genkwai. And then there's a couple of different classes that you've got. There's the Warrior, the Tradesman, the Sentinel, uh, the Defender, and the Explorer. Um, I'll leave it up to you to find out all the differences between these, because there's quite a lot. But some of the things that these classes differ between are things such as damage, shielding, the tanking capabilities, uh, exploring, and of course there's stealth, and that's a really cool feature. EMB can be played solo very well, it's, uh, it's definitely not required to play with a team, however you'll find that playing together with friends will work really well as you'll be able to combine your strengths as you take on enemies, as well as stuff like trading and building stuff really works very well if you're playing with others. Well, um, playing Earth and Beyond today has led me to understand that there's a very tight-knit community. A lot of people were readily available to help me. As a result, I was immediately pulled into a guild that was answering all of my questions, and that's really cool for a game that doesn't even have that many players at a certain given time. Uh, shout out to the guys over at Epic Gamers, by the way, because these are really cool, and I've really appreciated all of their help, so... There's already so much content available in Earth and Beyond, but more is added every day. I can't tell you much in regard to the amount of items available, but taking a look at all of the ship customization, the shops, and the fact that you can build your own items, I would say that the amount of content is more than sufficient to keep you busy for a long time. Uh, taking a look at the galaxy map will leave you in awe. There are literally hundreds of sectors available, ready to be explored, and I can tell you traveling can be quite a challenge as you're trying to find your route, considering that you need to set up your exact travel route, and you only find nav points as you are flying along. Did I mention planetary exploration? Yes. Not only can you fly around the galaxy or wander through space stations, you can land on planets. Not seamlessly, mind you, but you can fly around there, quest there, dock with different cities. It's all working, it's all there, and that's very impressive for a game that's from 2002. Obviously the graphics for Earth and Beyond are a little dated, you know, this game is from 2002, so what do you expect? However though, the game still looks good enough to satisfy. Um, the sunsets, for example, are very impressive, as well as asteroid belts can look very detailed and inspiring, I guess. The downside though to all of this would be that the planets are way not up to scale, they are very tiny. Um, and you can actually see the curves on them. And this does take away from the immersion, so that's a, yeah, that's a, a downside to me. Apart from the trailer, there are no cutscenes in Earth and Beyond. 
and the trailer looks very low resolution. But back in 2002, this was stunning cutting edge stuff. So let's cut it some slack, shall we? I haven't much experienced a storyline yet in Earth and Beyond. Of course, there are all of the different classes and races with the different starting locations and items, but a storyline I haven't seen yet, so I can't much comment there, and I don't want to either because there might actually be more to the storyline that I know for so far. However, you know, I will say that despite the graphics and despite the fact that the planets are just a little bit too small, the difference and the detail that I see in stuff does give me sufficient immersion to say I'm inside of the story. EMB can be played from first person or third person view, and control is direct but slightly limited in how the ship is controlled. Uh, holding right mouse button will allow you to freely steer around the ship, and I guess you could compare this to Freelancer most directly. Um, however, there is an up and there is a down, and that's weird because we're in space. You know, you can't make full ups, and that, you know, is a little strange to me. Um, flying your ship is relatively slow. Unless you use your warp drive to quickly warp from one location to another. But during this warp, you can't steer. So that is also, uh, yeah, limiting you in free flying to locations because it is just very tedious. Target destroyed. Earth and Beyond is free. So what more can I say here? Um, it won't take much time to download. Installing is very simple. And I'm willing to say that you will at least get a week of fun out of it, even if you don't stick with it. If you do stick with it, however, because you enjoy the genre, or maybe you've played it in the past and the nostalgia is hitting you, then I would suggest that you could get months, if not years, out of this game before you get tired of it, uh, or when, you know, before you've seen it all. I can't say much in regard to updates just yet. I can tell you that the entire thing is run by the community. I know there's a tight bunch of developers who add content and develop the functionality of this game constantly, but frequency and relevancy I cannot comment on just yet. The future of Earth and Beyond. This is a tough one to discuss. There isn't much attention for this game, and let's face it, there are better games out there. Uh, when we look at graphics or the controls, there are just games that do it better. So Earth and Beyond in my books is a game that will be reserved for the folks who once played this and are looking for some nostalgia like I mentioned. And in that sense, the future is set strong. I don't see this game growing much though, but I do see it staying strong with its current community. A lovely game to get back to, an amazing community, fine graphics, excellent functionality, not a lot of bugs at all. So overall a great game to dive into if you love space games like myself. Give it a shot, you won't be disappointed. Alright guys, thanks for joining me today. Do leave a comment and let me know what you think about Earth and Beyond yourself. I'm very curious to find out what you think about it. If you do decide to go and download and play this yourself, throw me a like and a subscribe if you're looking for more of these videos. I would definitely appreciate that. And I hope you'll join me again next time. See you later guys.